Hallelujah. You ain't got to worry about it being pulled asunder. Hallelujah. Because God's going to keep it. And he put them together. I know he put them together. Because they still here. And they fellowship together. We go to church together. Come on. Hallelujah. Well, I thank God for it. And, and, and she got a voice on her. Oh, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> I will put people on the spot like that. Praise God. Hallelujah. But I know she can say, Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. She lifted up to God. She glorified him. But I thank God for both of them. It was definitely a surprise, amen, for him. To, hallelujah. We're on the same softball team, praise God. So we take turn praying over our, 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 our challenged uh, teammates, amen. our spiritually challenged teammates. Praise God, just to put it lightly. <laughs> hallelujah. Because I, I, I see it, and he see it also as a men's ministry. Opportunity to, you know, witness before them. An opportunity to speak into their life. Pull them to the side and encourage them. Let them know, you know, just because you have some adverse condition don't mean you have to uh, fall short. Don't mean you have to act a fool. Praise God. You can still hold your head up high and you can still walk with some dignity. Amen. So I thank God for both of them. Uh, my wife is not here right now. She's taking my grandson to the hospital. Uh, he's having some asthma situation, but we believe God's going to work through that. Amen? Amen. Amen. So um, that's why she's not here currently. Amen. And for all other ones uh, that's not here, I don't know. They're vagabonds. They're missing in action. Praise <laughs> God. Pray for them. Praise the Lord. They get no phone call or nothing, so I thank God for it. Hallelujah. But today, um, I just believe God got a word for this house. You got to come with expectation. Amen? Amen. And today we're going to be coming out of Oh, she already put it up there. Praise God. She don't let me, you know, walk into nothing anymore. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Maybe I just don't need to give you the sheet until after I get in the pulpit. Brother Bob, you ain't got me recording yet, have you? Okay, praise God. Thank God somebody on that assignment. Hallelujah. I love her. Praise the Lord. She did well. Today we're going to be talking about controlling the measure. Controlling the measure. Now, he was like, well, what do you mean by controlling the measure? Well, once you go into the scripture, you want to see what I'm talking about. Um, we're going to be coming out of the book of Luke, the sixth chapter, verse 38. And once you get in that scripture, we're going to stand to our feet. We're going to read the first verse, and you may be seated for the rest of the verses. Amen? Amen. Amen. And we do this. We stand in reverence of the word of God, because that's the only thing that can deliver us. That's the only thing that can set us free. If we can get up for the president, we can get up for the word of God. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. And that reads in Luke 6, chapter verse 38. Give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, and shaken together, and running over, shall men give into your bosom. For with the same measure that you meet with all, it shall be measured to you again. Stand right there while we pray. Father, we just thank you right now for, for your word coming forth right now. Father, let me decrease as you increase. I pray that your word will come forth, oh God, for a clear revelation and clear understanding, oh Lord, that will move and shift us to another dimension, oh God. Move us out of our old and into our new, oh God. Set our minds to a higher level, oh God, that we may fall after you with all our heart, oh Lord. We thank you right now, oh God. If this word, hallelujah, finds something in us that's not like you, oh Lord, we thank you right now that you purge it, oh God, for we give you permission in our spirit and Oh God, to work accordingly. Holy Ghost, have your way in this place right now. Work and operate in this place right now, Lord. We just thank you right now, God. This is your service. We come to commune with you. We come to fellowship with you, oh Lord. We break bread right now, God. And we thank you right now for the revelation that you shall bring forth. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. You may be seated, praise God. Now, this, this word right here is, is controlling the measure. And as I was studying this and the Lord began to reveal some things, I, 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 I was watching and I, I was observing some things. And, and I realized when he said, give it shall be given to you, good measure. First of all, you got to understand what a good measure is. Anybody know what a good measure is? Okay, that's, that's a good measure too. So, uh, well, maybe we need to go someplace else. Maybe we need to define some words. Let's define two words, control, and let's define measure. Control means to determine the behavior or supervise the running of something. 
In other words, to be in charge of it, to run it, to manage it, uh, to supervise it, direct it, command it, you know, rule or govern, right? Okay, that's, that's the definition of control. Now, the definition of measure is a standard unit used to express the size, the amount, or degree of something. In other words, the system, the standard, the unit, or the scale that you use it with. All right, we got to understand the uh, 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 control and measure. All right, so now let's look back at this. A good measure, a good unit, a good system, a good standard of something, hallelujah, it's not good until it's been shaken. Okay. Or it's been pressed. Yes. Mm. Oh, Lord. Let me help you out. Praise God. Hallelujah. Okay. I, I need a volunteer. You with that, that, that white suit on and that blue shirt back there looking all cool. Come on up here with your hat on. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I, I got something for you. I got this basket right here. And, and, and it got something in it. Now, it's up to you. Because we're talking about controlling the measure. And God has given you a measure. And now it's up to you how your measure come back to you. So, I want you to go around and grudgingly give it away. Yeah, you know, just grudgingly, you know, give it away. You know, just if you want to give to someone, give it to them. If you don't like the way they eat in there, and I'm giving you my candy. Uh, you ever had someone like that that don't want to give something to you? But because you asked, they feel like they got to? <laughs> Hallelujah. So he, he done gave out some candy. But because he gave out candy the way he did, hold up, bro. Praise God. Now, what you gave out, God got to give it back. All right. All right. So, yeah, so you see, see you, you gave out All right. a few of us. So, God give you a few back. Hallelujah. Because that's all you did. You gave out a little bit, right? Mm. Hallelujah. So, he's still giving out some. He's giving what they got. I'm just trying to get, I'm just trying to bless someone. I'm trying to make someone smile today. I'm trying to make sure someone have a good day. Because hey. candy make me feel better. Hey. Sure. So he started giving it away and giving away, and all of a sudden, he, he, he's not worrying about how much he got left. Hallelujah. I wish God's people was more like that. Amen. Not just with their mouth and, and what their words they say, but in their action. Be cheerful in how they give. And because if you're cheerful in how you give, and you ain't looking over how many pieces they got and which pieces they picked out. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. <laughs> so we go back to his thing. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. He said, I ain't done with you yet, son. Hallelujah. I got some more stuff for you. Because you come up. Because you started out in the camp. your spirit. You leave out here with more than enough. Hallelujah. And now he can discriminate and doesn't even care about your heart. We may have life and life more abundantly. He come that we can have more than enough. It's no reason why we should be uh, 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 be lack in things. But God understand. But do you? Galatians 6 and 7 say be not deceived. God is not mocked. In other words, you got power over your possession. If you ride around in the car, and she said, well, I got a job, but I ain't got no way to get to it. And the Lord dealt with me. He said, you remember that truck? You say, I want to use, that you want to use for my glory? Let her hold it. I ain't say give it. Let her hold it. Because sometimes people get all kind of, they take their own revelations out of it. Hallelujah. And I keep telling myself, this bar was not yours. Yeah. Hallelujah. And because of that, she took it. And she drove around in it. I mean, she was paying a tithe, paying an offering, doing what's right by God. But she didn't pay no taxes on the vehicle. She didn't pay no payment on the vehicle. And she was still driving around. And every time I got in the, in the car alone, her, I filled it up with gas. Just because it happened to happen to you, don't mean it happen to somebody else. Hallelujah. And she had pressed down. She had shaken together, but now she was getting the running over part. Hallelujah. 
And now today, she called me up yesterday and she said, Pastor, she said, uh, 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 I got to hold your truck just a little while longer. But I want you to know that I got my own vehicle now. Glory. Hallelujah. I got me an Avalon parked out for her. So when she pulled up in the, in the, in the parking lot today, everybody looking for that truck, but the truck wasn't there. Some of us don't get the connection. We wonder why people are blessed, but when they tell you why they're blessed, you don't believe it for that reason. You say, it can't be because you're tired. It can't be because you're giving. Yes, it is because I'm tired. Yes, it is because I'm giving. Because I'm giving it to God. And who can beat me in giving but him? Oh, Lord. Hallelujah. He said, be not deceived. God is not mocked. My lies coming back. Don't think the devil can't multiply on his side. You just don't like his multiplication. So in other words, you got to live with the results of your action. In other words, there's cause and the effect. If you hang around bad people, bad stuff going to happen. Oh, come on. The Bible says evil communication corrupts good manners, right? If you keep hanging around people that's talking bad, keep lying on folk or cursing folk, you want to start lying, talking about and cursing folks. It's cause, and now you're dealing with the effect. Mm -hmm. It's amazing how people get all kind of into their feelings when they're in the effect side, but not in the cause side. Oh, when you was over there talking about people, and the Holy Ghost was trying to guide his assignment, that okay. tone, and they don't want assignment. Yeah. So when you speak bad stuff, it's on assignment to fulfill the bad. Come on. Mm -hmm. Ooh, wow. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Okay. We're almost there. We're almost there. In other words, you sow the wind and you reap the whirlwind. Ooh. Wow. See, see, that's a little bit deep right there. <laughs> Hallelujah. You only sow the wind. Uh -huh. It started off small with you. Uh -huh. But later on, because you sowed it, it got to come back bigger than what you sowed. Mm -hmm. And so now you're in a whirlwind of all the lies you done done, all the things you done told, all the untruth you done did. Hallelujah. You done got caught up in a whirlwind. Anybody ever been in trouble? Yes, sir. It seems like trouble just keep coming after you. Yes, sir. Seems like you just caught up in a whirlwind of trouble because you sold it. Jesus. Cause and effect. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Oh, I got, I got one more scripture. Praise God. Hallelujah. Proverbs, the 11th chapter. Verse 24. Hallelujah. I, I, come, come here, brother, uh, 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 with the white hat on. Brother back here. <laughs> That's for you. Yeah. And then he had some Reese's, okay. too. Uh -huh. And then he, on top of that, he had some Hershey's. Right. You, you leave out with your one pack. Glory. <laughs> Hallelujah. But I, I'm about to leave out here with a, a nine pack. Hallelujah. See, you got to catch that revelation of it. If you sow, you want to get more. Yes, Don't sir. be gradually. Don't hold it back. The more you give, the more shall come back to you. Hallelujah. If you want to done right by God, uh -huh. and just gave that one pack away. When he got easy, he could do whatever he want with it. Yes, sir. Because he sold it right. This is a return now. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. But even out of your return, you should take another offering off of it. Hallelujah. Uh, when you sow your forgiveness, it's being assigned to that unforgiveness you're sowing it into. Because most times you're forgiving someone, it's someone who hate on you. Someone who got unforgiveness in their heart. Someone who got some bitterness. Someone who done trouble you. Someone who done hurt you. That's why Jesus say, uh, what is it that you love on someone who love you back? What is it you give to someone who, 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 who you got invested interest into? Give them to the enemy. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. That's truly showing love then. Mm. He said one person give freely and yet gain even. Oh, yeah. Liberal souls shall be made fat. In other words, a generous person will prosper. Look at your name and say, a generous person will prosper. A generous person will prosper. 
Yeah. I told y'all before there was this, this story about the, the raccoon who, 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 who was hungry and he ran across this little box out in the woods mm -hmm. and it had his favorite treat inside. Mm -hmm. So he stuck his hand inside of it oh. and he grabbed hope to it. And he went through that little hole and he was good. Grab it, but he couldn't come out. Because our basic ABCs on giving. But if you go into the New Testament, you find them giving at the apostle feet. They laid everything out. Be because you should start on a rudimentary level and stay there. All right. You should keep elevating higher and higher in your giving. Yes. I tell people, I say, when I give into my pastor anniversary, each year I go up higher. Because I'm actually insulting him every time I'm giving at the same level. Oh, y'all don't want to hear that. Lord. I'm expecting more, but I'm giving at the same level. Jesus. You got to keep on increasing. You got to keep on going up. Hallelujah. I got to then, Brother King, uh, he was my son, uh, like a couple months later. And I started tithing. And then it started changing. All of a sudden, I went from the $6 to the $9. From the 9 to the 13 to the 15 to the 17 to the 21 to the 20. I just kept on going up. Because God blessed it what I was giving. And he always had to keep struggle. But I come to tell you, we still struggle in summer. We ain't struggle like we used to. And he said, he was testifying about it. And, and one of the sisters in the church called a revelation. Went home, went to I, uh, I, uh, you know, pick the wiggly, and got a whole big bag, a uh, big uh, tray of it. Went home and cooked it up and brought it to him. He came back, he said, I, I want to clarify my, they take me back. Hallelujah, if I'm going to go back, let me go back on my own accord. Let me choose when I'm going to eat pig feet, or uh, uh, chicken feet. And she didn't bring him anymore. I come to tell you that me and my wife supported this church for the first four years. Hallelujah, without your time. With a thousand dollars a month, that's the mortgage, which it still is. I'm transparent in our finance. My church know we're transparent in our finance. Hallelujah. But yet still, when I started out, I said, Lord, you know what our income is. Can we sustain this? And we was able to sustain it, and still our children didn't go without. God always sent a ram in the bush. God always sent someone. Hallelujah. The blessed us to get you over that hump. Just when you're coming up short. Hallelujah. All of a sudden, someone come in there and say, Lord, it's a tie here today. I said, Hallelujah. You just know that just enough to get over. But God said, I'm transferring you from the just enough to more than enough. Because he said, I don't want my people to be stuck on just enough. I don't want my people to be stuck on having just enough. But it's time to walk in the overflow of God. fullness of the earth is here. Yeah. All the cattle that sit on the every hill yeah. is his. Because they're more than a thousand of here. Yeah. Hallelujah. In other words, there's a standard, there's a system, there's a scale, and you know what calibrating it. Maybe that word is too big for you. You the one is determining how it balances out. You don't want to determine rather what it equates to zero. All right. Hallelujah. So you can raise it up or lower it down based on how you calibrate that. But I come to tell you today, I want to make sure mine calibrate to be heavy every time. Every time I put something on it, it's going to weigh down. It's going to be warning enough. Hallelujah. I need some candor right now. Look at it. He got the right spirit. Which one you want to give me? Either one. Oh, I get both of them? Oh, I love you, brother. Yeah. No, I'm going to let you in spirit. The way you give it out, I'm going to let you in spirit. I'm going to let you give out the day. Praise God. Now, um, I, I got to make sure I take care of my guests with this. Praise the Lord. Glory to the Most High. 